You may have seen our video on how to build your own reusable elastomeric respirator. If not, please see the link to the video above. This video is a follow-up based on some frequently asked questions we've received from viewers around the world. My colleagues will share with you what we have learned about the key components of the respirator. In this video, we hope to address the following questions. First, how do you achieve an effective seal between the respirator components? Second, what are the different filters that can be used in the respirator and what are their technical specifications? Finally, is this reusable elastomeric respirator equivalent to an N95? We're going to address the two key components of the respirator, the mask and the filter. Since our last video, we've tested a number of masks and seen many more variations in pictures from other institutions. The key thing to remember is that you need a good seal between your mask and your face and between your mask and your filter. For the mask to filter connection, it is important to note that there is a standard diameter for ventilator circuit connections, 22 millimeters. For most masks that we've tested, this is the inner diameter and is consistent from mask to mask. The outer diameter, however, is variable and dependent on how thick the plastic is. Therefore, a standard inline main flow filter typically used on ventilators fits into most masks. There has been concern that, after some time, the user may inadvertently flip the filter backwards during reassembly, exposing the contaminated side of the filter to the inside of the mask. In the masks and filters that we have tried, this has not been an issue because the ends of the filter have different diameters. Only one end of the main flow will fit securely into the mask. However, we cannot speak for every mask and filter combination. Through our work with the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, we learned about this green filter, the Pulmagard 2. This is not an inline ventilator filter, but rather a filter used for spirometry equipment during pulmonary function tests. Because it is not a ventilator filter, it does not fit into the masks in the same way that the main flow did. However, we did find that it fit the outer diameter of certain masks. Again, because the outside diameter of the masks are variable, the Pulmagard 2 was only compatible with some of our masks. The take-home points for the mask and filter connection are, one, you need to be sure your mask and filter fit together to form an airtight seal, and two, there is some variability among masks and filters, so be sure to check yours before use and placing large orders. In addition to the mask, a key component of the respirator is the filter. Respiratory protective equipment is tested and regulated by the government agencies, particularly the Food and Drug Administration, as well as the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, a branch of the CDC. The filters shown today are approved for use in ventilator circuits or pulmonary function testing. Other filters you may find could be approved for other uses. Let's review some of the important technical specifications of the different filters. To start off, let's introduce some key definitions. Filtration efficiency represents the percentage of a given particle that a filter is able to trap. Three types of filtration efficiencies are typically measured and reported, bacterial, viral, and particulate. For bacterial filtration efficiency, filters are challenged with a 0.3 micron bacteria carried within aerosolized droplets with a mean size of 3 microns. Viral filtration efficiency is evaluated using 0.03 micron bacteriophages also carried within aerosolized droplets with a mean size of 3 microns. Finally, submicron particle filtration is a NIOSH testing standard which uses even smaller 0.1 micron diameter sodium chloride particles to challenge respirators. This is the most conservative filtration test and leads to the N95 masks greater than 95% filtration efficiency rating. It is important to note that sodium chloride testing is not conducted on all filter media and that all personal respirators seeking NIOSH approval must go through this testing. The filters that we mentioned here, or that you may find in the ventilator circuits in your hospital, may not have undergone such testing. Next, the N designation of the N95 refers to a category designated by NIOSH for negative pressure air purifying respirators and refer to the mask's resistance to oil. N stands for not resistant. The additional categories are R and P, R meaning oil resistant and P meaning oil proof. To place all of this information into context, the current standard of care NIOSH approved N95 1860 respirator is not oil resistant, has greater than 99% bacterial and viral filtration efficiency, and greater than 95% sodium chloride submicron particle filtration efficiency.
In contrast, standard surgical masks have greater than 95% bacterial and viral filtration efficiency and a 78 to 87% sodium chloride filtration efficiency. Of note, surgical masks don't form a complete seal with the user's face. It is important to keep in mind that filters are most effective at protecting the user when incorporated into a mask that maintains a tight seal around the face. Surgical masks may allow particulate flow around the edges of the mask, bypassing the filter. Here are three example filters that we have examined in depth and have all passed a standard fit test following our hospital's environmental health and safety regulations. Two filters on the right are inline ventilator filters, which can be used for up to 24 hours in ventilator circuits. The green filter on the left, the PulmoGuard 2, is used for pulmonary function testing and long-term use has not been assessed. One advantage of this filter is that it does not put additional stress on the ventilator filtration supply chain that has experienced increased utilization because of the COVID-19 pandemic, a concern expressed by some of our last videos and viewers. The PulmoGuard 2 from SDI Diagnostics fits onto the outside of our hospital's masks, as Rob mentioned, and uses a pleated design to increase surface area, resulting in decreased flow resistance and improved breathability. In addition, the pleated design helps to increase the filter's efficiency at capturing particles. The filter media used in the PulmoGuard is electrostatically charged and has a greater than 99.9% .9 filtration efficiency against bacteria and viruses, and a greater than 90% filtration efficiency for sodium chloride submicron particles. We would like to once again emphasize that this filter is used for pulmonary function tests and not required for inline ventilator circuits that are being used for COVID or other critically ill patients. This is the main flow bacterial viral inline ventilator filter manufactured by Teleflex. This circular filter is electrostatically charged and uses filter media that has greater than 99.99% .99 bacterial and viral filtration efficiency. It has not been tested against sodium chloride subparticulate. It fits easily within the inner diameter of our hospital's masks. The ServoGuard filter made by Gatinje is a HEPA grade inline ventilator filter with heat and moisture exchange capabilities. Its filter media is rated at an efficiency of greater than 99.99% .99 bacterial and viral filtration. To our knowledge, the ServoGuard has not been tested using sodium chloride submicron particulate. In addition, viewers have asked about usage of heat moisture exchangers which we would like to emphasize are not intended for filtration. So you may be asking yourself, what does this all mean? At the end of the day, all of these filters have been tested using standard methods by a third party laboratory to ensure their bacterial and viral filtration efficiency. These bacterial and viral filtration efficiencies have been shown to be similar to an N95 mask. However, NIOSH requires additional testing of submicron particle filtration using sodium chloride. In this case, the N95 mask outperforms the filter media using the Pulmogar 2 by single digit percentages. The two inline bacterial viral filters we have examined in detail have not been tested for the submicron particle filtration efficiencies. The clinical relevance of this difference is unclear at this time, and the safety of and efficacy of respirators are dependent not only on the filter, but also on many other factors, including the seal and appropriate clinical usage. One of the most commonly asked questions we have received is, is this equivalent to an N95 respirator? We'd like to remind our viewers that due to time constraints and testing availability, at this time, we are not able to make any direct comparisons to the standard of care N95 surgical mask respirator, and this device has not been cleared by any regulatory bodies. This is an educational video intended to help healthcare workers make informed decisions about respiratory PPE during crisis capacity as defined by the CDC.